Okay, now we're continuing with our processing uh, lessons. And uh, this lesson is going to be talking about color. Uh, we've, uh, we've done um, basic shapes. We've done uh, grayscale. We've talked a little bit about color, but not in any detail. So I'm going to talk a fair amount more about color. Now, uh, we use color uh, in um, our fill um, commands. So here you see, here's a fill, here's a fill. We can use color in background. Uh, we can use color actually in several places. I think we might be able to actually use color in stroke too, if my memory's right. And um, so let's talk about color. And um, so in particular, let let me just copy this code, and then we can it will generate uh, this these figure right here. So I'm going to copy this code and put it in in our uh, here right here in our our sketch window. Now uh, you may remember. We put the double slash and then type something. That's a comment. That's not processed um, uh, by the by the compiler, or it's not processed by the computer when it runs the code. It's just the text that is used to provide information about what the particular line in the code does. And notice here, the only one that copied over here was this one right here. And so this is supposed to be drawing a blue circle. Just to go over this again, we have our familiar size box. No stroke, so we're not putting a boundary around the shape. Uh, the background is almost black, not completely black. If it was 0, 0, 0, it would be completely black. This is red, green, and blue. So fill 255.00 is pure red. We're drawing an ellipse with pure red. Then we do fill 0, 255, 0, that's pure green. And then we do down here, after we draw the ellipse, we do fill of pure blue. So uh, let's, let's run the code. So here's what we get. Now, I pulled this up out of my, uh, on my computer, on my Mac. I have what's called a digital color meter. So I can put the... Uh, the mouse uh, right over a point on the screen and it tells me what the color is on that point. So I put the mouse here and you see up above in the digital color meter it's red is 255, green is 0, and blue is 0. Let me pull this down a little bit closer so you see. Now, so there we are. Now I move over here. I have green. Notice that the green moves around a bit. It's not this green. I put it here. It's 0, 223, 212, 218. So I'm getting a little bit different than pure green. So what's being printed here on, on my screen is not exactly um, this pure green 255. Here I go to blue and everywhere in here my blue is pure uh, 255. So it's interesting here that the green, here I get 255. Let's do it again. 255, 255, 255. Okay, I must have been doing something wrong, stupid. Now I put it down here and I don't quite get that. It's pretty interesting. I wonder why. Okay, so now we get um, pure 255. For green. So this is the brightest green, brightest red, and the brightest blue here. Okay, so, so much for that. Let me close this out here. Okay, so these are putting down colors. Now, um, so these are referred to as RGB, red, green, blue colors. Um, and we've, I'm, I'm confident you've seen this before in places like Photoshop. And um, 
Now, using RGB color, it isn't very intuitive, so to choose colors they use, they say tools like the color selector. Um, this is uh, which shows a color palette similar to those found in other software. See a color and then use RGB and uh, values as the parameters for your background or stroke functions. We can use stroke to put the color of a boundary around a shape. And um, so uh, that's pretty straightforward. Let's move on down here. Here's color selector, processing color selector. So we pull, we can pull up um, a pattern with a gradient color in it, and we put the mouse at a particular point, and it tells us what the numbers are for the color associated at that point. Um, and uh, so it's sort of just like my digital color meter is working here. Now I put the mouse there and I'm getting 65 for red, uh, green is 191, and blue is 223. Now here, notice that those aren't exactly the same colors that they have here. And I think that's because the color actually displayed in the book isn't exactly this color. Possibly when the book was transformed into a PDF the colors didn't come out quite right. Who knows what exactly happened there. Okay, now transparency. Set transparency. By adding an optional fourth parameter. So, for example, in fill we have three parameters for red, green, and blue. We can add a fourth parameter known as the alpha value. And alpha, alpha ranges from 0 to 255 to set the amount of transparency. Value 0 defines a color as entirely transparent. It won't display. The value 255 is entirely opaque. Okay, so let's look at this right here. Let's look at this diagram. So let me copy this. Okay, from all the way down here. Here. You know, it's, maybe the page gets in the way here. Let me copy it in two parts. Copy. There we go. There. And now let me get the second part down here. There we go. Okay. Now, um, so here's our red, green, blue, and then our fourth parameter which determines the, uh, so looks like I didn't get everything here. Let me try this again. I must have done something wrong. Oh. Copy. Paste. Okay. Here, what it's doing is, uh, it's doing something, actually, I've seen it happen. Turns out we can, uh, depending on how the uh, programming sketch window works, we can actually put multiple lines together, uh, multiple commands on the same line, just like this, as long as we put a semicolon in between them. So let's, let's see how that works. So let me copy this. Copy, put this down here, right there. Now I should be able to still run the code because it treats each one of these as a separate line. And there we are. There's our code. Now here you see that our uh, we have a transparency in in the uh, in the circles that we're drawing, and in particular, um, here's our background, which is a gray. It looks a bit of a bluish tint on that gray here, and you can see that from the numbers. Um, we have, uh, we're going to do a fill on the first ellipse here, and the fill is red, and there's a transparency of 160. Now watch what happens when I set this transparency to zero right there. I set it to zero and run it, and the circle is there, and it's red, 
but it's completely 100% transparent. So we don't, uh, we don't see it. Okay. Now, the, um, let me put that back to 160. Oh, there we go. I didn't mean to hit that return there. And then run it again, and we see that the, the red is popping back up. So transparency, you also have transparency in, in Photoshop, and you may have seen that. Okay, this uh, is can be useful. The custom shapes, uh, particularly if you're doing animations. And um, so it's a very simple custom shape here. We're going to draw an arrow. Now, let me examine how we do this. We're going to begin with a statement, begin shape, right here. And um, then we define the shape. We're defining the fill for the shape in terms of red, green, and blue. And then we begin, we're going to mark out the vertices. So this will be, let's say, the first vertex, second vertex, third vertex, and so on. So we define the vertices that make up the shape. So let's, let's just plot these out. Now notice that it isn't going to draw the shape unless we put end shape here. So we need begin shape, we define all the vertices, and then we put end shape. So let's grab that. Okay, end shapes, there we go, size. Okay, here we go. This is it. Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the end shape and I'm going to move it to this line right here. And let's see what we get when we draw. We only get that segment right there, that segment, which is this segment. So we have the line connecting the first two vertices. Now I can take this and move it down. One more, move it down here. So now we have a third vertex. But what are we going to get when we do this? I'll hit draw and we have the first line and then the second line right there. So you see how this is coming out. Now let me pull the end shape all the way to the end right here. There we go. I'll hit run. Now, so we have a line connecting all these vertices. Notice that there's no line here. And um, we could put in, we could have it draw that line. For example, right here I could put return and then I could repeat the first vertex. Let's try that. Okay, now I'll hit run. And indeed, look, it closes it. Or the way the book says to do it is when we do end shape, we do, we type end shape close. So Right here, I type close, C-L-O-S-E. And that will automatically do the same thing as repeating that first vertex. There we go, right there. Might be interesting, let's use the color meter. Let's check the color of that fill right here and see if it's 153, 176, 180. Okay, so here we are. 153, 176, 180. That's what the numbers we're getting right here. See that? 150. So, okay. So it's doing right. So, that is um, how we can define special shapes. And this can, can come in handy. Uh, let's say if you're doing a game, you have a fixed shape, and all you want to do is move that shape around. So there should, we should be able to define the shape, and then we should be able to give it some 
location parameters that determine the location of the shape. Now, potentially, we might even want to rotate the shape. So we would expect to have some procedure for doing that. So this section here finish off, finishes off with create some creatures. So let's look at this. We're going to have two creatures. The left creature here which uh, presumably is this creature, and then we have the right creature right down here. Okay, so let's put those in. Let's put the creatures in one at a time. So we have this creature. And then we finish off that creature down here. There. So let's see if we hit run that code, we get the left creature as just as promised. And um, now let's add the right creature right down here. Right creature. We'll put that in right there. There's the right creature. Now let's run the code and see what we get. There we go, the right creature. So this could be some kind of a bird. Maybe it's supposed to be some kind of a dinosaur. Who knows, right? Okay. Now, let's just look at some of these comments. Um, I've said this before. We use the double slashes. Is, uh, is, in fact, a comment statement here. That's what this section is about, presumably here. And at the end of the line, to add comments to a code, comments are part of the program that are ignored when the program runs. They're useful for making notes for yourself that explain what's happening in the code. If others are reading your code, comments are especially important to help them understand what you're doing when you write it. So it's one of the primary mistakes that beginning computer programmers do is they don't put enough comments in their code. I've, I've done it. I mean, maybe I'll give you an example of that uh, later in a couple weeks of how I've written code that does something really cool and there just may not be enough comments. So debugging the code, uh, understanding it, is uh, can be a bit of a challenge. Now, uh, comments can be useful for, as they point out here, for choosing the right color. So we can define a fill, but the fill is not quite the right color. So we just comment. It's a typical way for debugging code. Here, let me give you an example here. Let's just take this and show uh, what I'm talking about. There. Now. Okay. Now, let's copy this, copy and put it in here. Okay, we have our box, we put our fill, we're drawing an ellipse. And we say, gee, that color isn't quite right. I wanted that to kind of be like a sky blue. And unless this is maybe a Martian sky, it's not quite right. So I comment it out. Now, if I just comment at the fill, you remember what the color looks like here? It's all white. Look at that. Okay, now let's guess. What might be a good sky blue? So we'll do fill. And uh, perhaps red. Probably don't want much red. Let's put 20. Um, and let's say we want uh, 180 in the green. And comma 200 in the blue. Let's see, does that give us a kind of a sky blue? Oh, oh you know what I forgot? A semicolon. Of course, I've never done that before. Okay, now let's run it. That's not bad. I don't think it's kind of blue enough. Let's cut back on the green a bit. 
let's do 140. Run it. That's maybe a little bit better, but the blue's kind of deep. Let's do one 280. I'm sorry, 180. So, you know, so you know, we could say, okay, this is a candidate, uh, but let's play around a little bit more. So we comment that out. And then we do fill again, which I'll do just by copying, copy, and then go down here. And um, let's make this 120. And 170. And let's see what this looks like. It's kind of dark. Maybe we need to make these brighter. It's kind of dark. Let's go back up. Let's go 200, all the way, 200. Okay, so you get some idea how you can use comments. So you keep the old things as you're adding, uh, you know, modifications. And uh, we do this all the time, especially in debugging code. We have something that isn't working quite right, maybe several lines of code. And so... We just don't want to delete them all. Uh, we want to kind of keep them. If we to, to go, be able to go back to our starting point in the debugging process at some point, if we need to do that. So comments are really useful in debugging code. Now, um, and that's what they're talking about right in here. And then they're giving a shortcut if you're using a Mac for commenting a line, which I think for most of you is not important. So this is uh, this is then what I'm going to talk about uh, today in color. Next, I'm going to start drawing some more complex shapes in the next video. So let's look forward to that.